Okay. Hello, I'm Linda Lavin. I'm Barry Nelson. I'm Joan Rivers. I'm Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. That's our celebrity jury. And this is Mrs. Billy Siegel of Massapequa, Long Island, who will also make a judgment in the case of the shapely fraud on What's the Law? Here's the presiding justice, Henry Morgan! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to What's the Law? Hi, jury. Hello, Linda, Barry, Joan, Doug. Hello. <laughs> Have you ever had a brush with the law? You ever been in jail? You ever been in court? Panel? <laughs> No. We have to answer that? No, they don't things. have to answer that. It's an indiscreet opening question. But, uh, <laughs> we're going to leave time for a possible answer to that, but remember you can incriminate yourself. We're going to ask you to listen to cases actually tried and decided in courts of law. Some of them may sound odd, but they're all based upon true cases from the files. We want to see if you arrive at the same decisions that the court did. There'll be no money or prizes for you, but for each correct decision, a legal aid society in the state of your choice will receive $50. And in each case, we'll ask a member of our studio audience for a verdict and a chance to win some valuable prizes. And we'll be back to hear our first case, the case of the um, shapely fraud, right after this message. <laughs> our first case, Chet Gould, what are the facts? This is the case of the shapely fraud. Homer thought that he had married a curvaceous blonde. <laughs> but on their wedding night, she stepped behind a dressing screen and began tossing out each of her charms. A wig, false eyelashes, false fingernails, padded bra, and false hips. <laughs> when she reappeared, Homer's wife had a figure that rivaled any scrawny 14-year-old boy. <laughs> Homer raced to court and demanded an annulment on the grounds of fraud. He said, I thought I married a work of art only to discover she was a work of construction. <laughs> Had I known the truth, I'd never have married her. Said his wife to the judge, nonsense. A woman has the right to make herself as alluring as possible. That's not fraud, that's battle tactics. <laughs> if you were the judge, would you free Homer from his shapeless wife? Thanks, Chet. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Jory, let's uh, think a little bit about this sort of filled out twiggy. <laughs> if this case came to you, how do you think you would have judged? Uh, Linda, do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I would have asked Homer if his middle name were Michelangelo. I mean, what was, what were he, was, uh, what was his interests? Were he, so he a sculptor? Is he uh, interested in this lady only because of her body? Did he, uh, did he marry a body? And in that sense, he's got a case. <laughs> but in, uh, why... I would have asked him what uh, his relationship was with the lady, and was it only a physical one? And if it was only a physical one, why didn't he know that before? <laughs> oh, now, well, perhaps minute, under the... I would have said that. <laughs> perhaps That's under the... Brought up. <laughs> perhaps under the laws of that state, he didn't have too much chance to find out before. Ah. You could have asked. <laughs> John, you... <laughs> In other words, well, we'll come back and get your final thinking in. Okay. We'll, we'll hear what the other members of the jury have to say. <laughs> Barry, you look deep in thought. Well, that's as far as I can go. But uh, <laughs> I, I'd like to avoid the uh, titillating discussion of Homer's experiences, <laughs> <laughs> as fascinating as they may be. I'd, I'd go on the basis that beauty should be more than skin deep. And uh, you're tending to say that you think there's some fraud here. Or there isn't. I'm glad you put it that way, because I was terribly confused. <laughs> well, now I'll have to join you. Which way, <laughs> which way are you going? Uh, what whatever you, you said, Henry, is okay <laughs> by me, because uh, I, I always like your work, and <laughs> I'll go the first way. How's that? Fine. you remember I'll, what it was? No, but I'll All come right. back to me later and see if I know what I'm talking about. Joan Rivers. I think there was, uh, that the judge can say there's an annulment involved, because in this society, you have to get married, you're pushed into it, and men are shallow, and anything a woman can do to catch somebody is legal and fair. And, uh, right? Right. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and that's all. And, as an example, and I swear to you this is the truth, 
I wore my wig in bed for five weeks when I first got married. I was too scared to show Edgar, you know. <laughs> and then he found out and it was too late, so there's no case. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fairbank, sir. Well, I'm wondering, maybe she has a counter case. Did he pad the, pad the shoulders of his, of his jacket, you know? Mm. She might have had the same complaints that I thought you were a, a muscle man from the beach or something like that. Instead of that, I see your tailor's padded your shoulders. And, she could have had a counter case. That's would... nice thinking, but of course we're trying to stick to the case we've got. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that in, in, point, in, in point of law, I should think that, he, that it would be assumed that, that he, he married for more than external reasons. Mm -hmm. I think there's sort of a general agreement on part of the panel. That happens to be a crashing gavel. <laughs> Let's sum up. Linda, you say... You think that there is... I don't understand what's fraudulent about it, but you not... want a verdict? Yes, I want a verdict. <laughs> uh, I say Homer gets an annulment because the way things work around here, <laughs> Homer gets an annulment. <laughs> the way things work around uh, here. All right, Barry. I'd like to throw the whole case out, but I think that... Uh, the law cannot make a distinction easily about where false eyelashes and other false things, where does one become fraud and other an adornment. So I think they'd be so confused they'd say Homer stays married. Homer stays married. Joan? I think unless it turned out that the wife was a guy, Homer stays married. <laughs> That's wrong. That's right. Otherwise... <laughs> I'm glad you didn't get too legal there, <laughs> Mr. Fairbanks. Well, I feel sort of like, like Barry, that, that you might as well say that lipstick is broad because lips aren't that color, so you, you, there's no end to where you might go, so that he would... Uh... Well, now, fine. <laughs> uh, we, uh, Linda, you seem to be alone. Yes. The other members of the jury say he stays married, and it was not fraud. Now, at the opening of our show, we met Billy Siegel of Massapequa, Long Island, who is in our studio audience. Uh, Mrs. Siegel, what's your verdict? I say he gets the annulment. You say he gets the annulment? Yes. All right. This is how the judge ruled. Da -da -dum -da -dum. Homer stays married. Good. Ah. Very good. Just as you said. <laughs> now, what happened is this. The judge held that during courtship, a woman need not tell her intended spouse that she used devices or other attachments to improve on nature's work on her face or figure. Now, I have to tell you, and I will pretty often to remind you, we don't know anything about the law. Uh, these are real cases, and this one was um, a case that was d uh, tried in an o in Ohio court of common pleas. And we're just playing a game just to see whether we're as smart or as dumb as that judge was. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mrs. Siegel, you didn't agree with the judge, um, but for appearing with us on What's the Law, we do have a gift for you, Chet. Yes, Mrs. Siegel, you'll travel in style with brand new luggage. Here's Norma. And she's showing us a lovely three-piece set of Samsonite silhouette luggage. This matching set is in Dover White. It features hidden locks and a lightweight magnesium frame. And it's yours, Billy Siegel, from Watch the Law. Nice work. Jury, you're doing fine. Linda, you still are a little scoreless, we'll say. Barry, Joan Rivers, Doug Fairbanks Jr. each has $50 rung up. And we'll be back with our next case in just one minute. Let's take a little time out from the law and find out something about our celebrity panel. Linda Lavin, what you been doing? Oh, I'm in a play called Something Different now, the Carl Reiner comedy over at the Court Theater. I know it full well, Sawyer. Thought you were marvelous. Very funny play. Thank you, isn't it? Yes, yes it thank is. You, Henry. Fine thank evening. You. Barry, the end. You're in rehearsal, I think. No, I've opened in Everything in the Garden, the Edward Albee play, and I'm glad you haven't seen it because I wouldn't like your appraisal, but uh, <laughs> I know how you like my work. But <laughs> As a matter of fact, the reviews I read, you've got great reviews. Thank you very much. I'm very fond of your work. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm your leading fan. 
Oh, well, well all those ugly rumors, I suppose, are... <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You, you know, we're, you're the boyish type. I'm a rotten old man. We're no competitors. Let's leave it at that, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Joan Rivers. I'm still the downstairs, the upstairs, forever. I signed a stupid contract. And, uh, <laughs> You're not happy? <laughs> oh, dear. A lot of people would love to have a stupid contract. Yeah, for $5 kind. a week plus drinks. <laughs> 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 Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., what you been doing? Uh, nothing much. Oh. <laughs> just Welcome traveling, to the club. traveling, just keeping the airlines in business. That's about what I do. <laughs> Hoping for the best when I get off. <laughs> All right, jury, here's case number two. Studio audience, listen carefully. One of you will be asked to give your verdict. This is called the case of the chicken or the eggs. Calvin swiped a hat full of eggs worth about 50 cents a dozen. As he was running away, he had the ill fortune of running into two passing policemen, and at that very moment, the eggs hatched. <laughs> now, it sounds ridiculous. This actually happened. Instead of being charged with petty larceny, in accordance with the law and the value of the stolen eggs, he was charged with grand larceny, based on the value of the chickens. He said, I didn't steal any chickens. All I stole was a hat full of eggs worth about a half a buck. You can't say I'm guilty of grand larceny. Maybe he stole eggs, returned the prosecuting attorney, but when we caught him, he had chickens. Now, if you were the judge, would you sentence Calvin <laughs> for grand larceny or for petty larceny? Anybody want to start this eggy thing? We'll break it up and make it up. <laughs> if it's for small eggs, I just call it petty larceny. But a big egg is in a whole... I don't want to bring you into this, Henry, because I know you're trying to keep out of it and very, very objective, but... Uh... Yes, there's no ham in this case. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, and, and I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the case is, uh, did the man steal eggs or did he steal chickens? Did he get any of the eggs on his face? That's another thing. Oh, he ended up with egg on his face. <laughs> yeah. You have to give it, I guess, a, a little thought here. So it which, sounds pretty which, simple. Which came first, the chicken or the... Mm. Or the court decision? <laughs> Sorry about he that. He stole eggs, but he was caught with evidence, right? I mean, aren't you caught with evidence? Aren't you... Linda, the way this thing reads is that he was running away, and at the moment he was caught, the eggs hatched. Yeah. So That's they caught him with chicken. I... Well... Whatever came out of the eggs, okay. No, really, they caught him with once chicken. Once again on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a half a dollar's worth of eggs as he was running away that he stole. As he was running away, two cops stopped him. The eggs started to hatch. So they said, he said, well, it's petty larceny. I just stole eggs. The cops said, we caught him with chickens. It's grand larceny. I and all I'm asking you is, which is it? What if there be any, any, any bearing? There was a, a, a woman the other day I read about somewhere who was arrested and in prison for having a baby and said, you have no right to incarcerate my baby because you're incarcerating me. Mm. Uh, the baby was not yet born. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't, I want to ask, of course, what I want to ask is how did it come out, but I don't know how to phrase it. <laughs> I imagine they put her in jail anyway, didn't they? Yeah, and, and, and so... Let my, the my... baby get his own lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, say, we're making great progress uh, with this egg and chicken thing. Really? I... I'm going to have to ask you for a vote. Uh, uh, Linda, take a side. You've got okay. cards there. Um, I say it was petty, petty larceny and eggs because he stole eggs. You say he stole eggs and it's petty larceny. And yeah. Barry, you say... I think he should be judged on intent, which would make it petty larceny that he stole the eggs. All right, Barry Nelson, Joan Rivers. Yes, I think exactly because he you didn't... You've got a nice little card there. We, we use it just because it's such a beautiful thing to look at. A little which card one? that you have in front of you? you oh, own? oh, this one you mean. It's not so gorgeous. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, he's vicious. But, uh, petty larceny. <laughs> petty larceny because, again, it's the same thing. There were some kids that stole paintings and they didn't realize they were Picasso's up in the Bronx. And uh, did you read about this? No. Yeah, no. and um, they got theirs. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's the first I knew they had Picasso's in the Bronx. <laughs> uh, in the Bronx. Not to knock the Bronx, but well, Picasso's international. Uh, Mr. Fairbanks. Harry Picasso. <laughs> now you want to discuss it. Before, you didn't have anything to say. Petty larceny. Unanimous verdict, yeah. Unanimous. Yeah, now, we've chosen from our studio audience a Miss <laughs> Diana Rojan. And we'll be back in 60 <laughs> no. seconds to ask you your verdict. Okay, 
now Mrs. Rojan in our studio audience. You heard the case. If you were the judge, how would you rule? I think it was petty larceny. Petty larceny. You agree with everybody on our jury? Yes. All right. This is exactly what happened. The judge ruled. Well, this is a surprise. Uh, petty larceny. Oh. Oh. oh, dear. Yeah. That's what he decided. Petty larceny. Calvin stole eggs. He was not sentenced for grand larceny. The judge held, as is no surprise to anybody, the value of stolen property is fixed as of the time of the theft. That at the time of the theft, in this case, the value of the property stolen was the value of the eggs and not the value of the subsequently hatched chickens. So, <laughs> Diana Rojan, you agreed with the judge. Chet, what has Mrs. Rojan won? Mrs. Rojan, you have won two beautiful timepieces. His and her watches. Norma again with a quality gift of time from Lucien Picard. Beauty, elegance, precision, and dependability in his and her watches. A most distinguished name in watchmaking, Lucien Picard, and it's yours, Mrs. Rojan, from What's the Law? We'll be back in a minute. Okay, let's see how our jury's doing as far as money's concerned. Linda Lavin, you have won Lavin. fifth... Lavin. Lavin. I'm sorry, my, my sight isn't so good. <laughs> Linda Lavin, $50. If you had 100 I'd know. <laughs> Barry Nelson and Joan Rivers and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. has each won $100 for the Legal Aid Society. Now, let's hear the next case, Chet. This is the case of the thrifty wife. During the 30 years that Myron was married to Betsy, she had no money or income of her own. Her only job was to take care of the house. One day, Myron was shocked to learn that his wife had purchased two income-producing houses. He demanded to know where she got the money to make the purchase. And Betsy refused to offer a word of explanation. Myron judged that he had given her more than $100,000 during their years of marriage to run the household. In court, he stated, Betsy bought the houses out of household savings, therefore the houses belonged to me. If you were the judge, would you rule that the houses purchased by Betsy actually belong to her husband, Myron? Uh, what state did this happen in? What? Oh, you want to know the state first? Yes. Uh, New York. All right, thank you. And it was uh, what our decision is based on. Our decision is the decision of the New York Supreme Court. So, Linda Lavin, now you have all the facts in the state. Do you have any opinion? See, I've never been married, and I don't understand what goes on. I see. If you, if you, oh, I understand a few things about what goes on, but I don't understand a lot. Of, if you have, if you save the money that your husband gives you, if that becomes your money, or if it's always his as long as you're married to him, I just don't know. Well, honey, I, that, that... I figure if you if you keep house and make beds for as many years as she did, then you earn that money. The money uh, belongs to the wife. That the money belongs to the wife. And the, in this case, the houses belong to her. I would say that the houses belong to her until I hear differently. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to push you. No, I know that. Because I, just... I know that you're a single girl. Right. And oh. you just don't know about this stuff, right? That's right. But that's why you're on the jury. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, do you seem to go along with Linda or not? No, no my specialty actually is international law. <laughs> <laughs> If I, if I flounder a little, you'll understand, but, uh... It's the, nice to have you with us, sir. <laughs> I don't know. I think if a girl is given a little mad money, she ought to be able to, you know, do what she wants to it. If she wants to get an Eskimo pie or a house or something like that, it's her business. Okay? It's okay with me if it's okay with you. Sure. See, I, I don't know international <laughs> law. Local lady, Joan Rivers. Was First of all, was it established that it, how she got the money? Because when, you know, Myron left in the morning, she was free to, you know, have a good time. <laughs> but, um, so, that's his play. Because that's the play you're in that's now, right. right? Everything in the garden, Edward, all be. I want to get that in. All time. about that. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think that uh, once money is given to you, whether it's your household money or your allowance money, it's yours. <laughs> I'm very bitter. Because as Linda doesn't know, but I know for dusting and cleaning and sweeping and cooking, you deserve it. And what you can save out of it, good for you. And there's the, her houses, and she's not getting any younger, and the hell with Myron. And that's that to keep the houses. Yeah. Gee, uh, I, I didn't know you felt so strongly about it. You're lucky she didn't hit you. <laughs> I'm sort of sorry I brought the case up. But to, to clear up one little thing, it says he asked her where she got the money, 
and she just didn't bother to explain it. Smart girl. And he, <laughs> apparently, and he said that he'd given her over $100,000 over the years, and yeah. he figured it may have come out of that. Mr. Fairbanks. Well, uh, in the first place, I don't think that you marry someone like you would go to a, 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 and, and engage them, hire them for the job. You know, you, it's another thing altogether. You don't go out and say, I'm going to engage a, a wife for uh, 10 years or 20 years, the case may be. But the main legal question would be, what is the status of community property in New York State? Do you know that? Wouldn't that have a bearing on the answer? Uh, I uh, rather what? imagine it has something to do with it. See, I have the answer written down, so I can't uh, oh. go to uh, the would it, about it, would, it would, uh, would affect, I think it now has a community property law, so I would think that, that it would be um, a, a divisible answer. That it, yeah, of course, uh, ideally, we're not supposed to worry too much about what the law is. Is how do you feel about this? Well, it's kind what of the thing. judge would have said. So you yeah, say, okay. All the testimonies in. Let's uh, see how you vote finally. Linda Lavin? Uh, yes. Uh, if you were the judge, what would you say? The husband owns the houses or the wife does? I would say the husband does not own the house. Husband does not. All right. Barry Nelson? I would say the see? husband uh, does not own the houses. The husband does not own the houses. And John Rivers? Absolutely no. Is it? Is you want to put a little absolutely <laughs> over that? Husband absolutely does not own the houses. And Mr. Fairbanks says... Um... Ah. He's too smart. Well, it's not without suspense. Um, <laughs> well, I'll go along just before. I'm, I'm very divided about it. I don't really know. You're, I don't you're know how divided the community both property would work. I see. <laughs> All right. Huh. In the studio audience, what's your verdict, Ted Owens of Stamford, Connecticut? I would say the husband does. Oh, no. Oh. Just to be different. Just to be different. He says that the husband does. I think I want to um, <laughs> Let's see. Captain Owens agrees with... Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Let's see how the court ruled. This is what the judge said. The husband owns the house. Sure he does. <laughs> well, now, this is very interesting because in the verdict, he covers some of the points you brought up. The judge said, Money given to a wife to run a household is not a gift, and it's not compensation to her for performing her wifely duties. Any such money left over belongs to the husband. Therefore, the houses brought from the household savings belong to the husband. Well, Captain Owens, your verdict agreed with that of the judge. Chet, tell Captain Owens what he won. Captain Owens, you have won an AM, FM, portable radio. <laughs> and here's Norma once again to show you your prize. From Ross Electronics, it's an AM-FM portable radio with marine and shortwave bands, and some cases fitted with dial lights, a world map, and time zone dial. It's yours, Captain Ted Owens from What's the Law? And he'll be back after this interesting message. That's all for now. The scores as we go on to glory. Linda Lavin, $50. Barry Nelson, $100. Joan Rivers, $100. Douglas Fairbanks Jr., $100. All the money going to legal aid societies. It might be interesting to note this legal point. In the town of Bath, Maine, it's against the law for non-residents to dig worms. <laughs> Remember, you heard it here first. And if you have a problem, if you have a problem with the law, forget us. Consult a lawyer. <laughs> we don't claim to know what it's all about simply because we don't. We only give you the decisions from the files of the various cases. All our prize money tonight will go, as I said, to the Legal Aid Society. We want to thank the members of our studio audience, uh, Mrs. Siegel, Mrs. Rojan, and Captain Ted Owens for playing What's the Law? And thanks again to Linda Lavin, Barry Nelson, Joan Rivers, Doug Rivers Jr. We hope you'll join us in the studio again. If you didn't have the junior in there, I would have had so much more time. <laughs> Our celebrity jury faces some interesting legal problems and tries to determine what's the law.
cases have been taken from the syndicated column by Jack Strauss and are all based upon actual cases of law. The Law has been a Jerry Hammer production in association with Official Films Incorporated. This is Chet Gould speaking.